Hi folks! I received a lot of questions and requests to test things with my Jewel Thief lighting a compact fluorescent light bulb. So, as a follow-up to my How to Make a Jewel Thief Light a CFL video, I thought I'd make this video. I even came up with a pretty cool solar cell test to do with it. The first thing I did was to desolder it all and convert it to a breadboard for easy testing. The first test is to add batteries and see if the light is brighter. So I adapted a box with the light bulb inside so that it can be nice and dark. I put a hole on one side for my camera to look in without letting in a lot of extra light. The best way I found to connect the batteries without influencing things too much was to use electrically conductive neodymium magnets. I used them to connect the batteries together and to connect the alligator clips too, all of which are attracted to the magnets. I first tried with two 1.5 volt AA batteries, then a third, and then a fourth. As you can see, there's only a little improvement. Though the more batteries you have, the longer it'll run for. And this was with everything on my camera set to manual and manually adjusted. I was asked what effect the variable resistor or potentiometer has. As you can see, decreasing the resistance increases the brightness, and increasing the resistance decreases the brightness. So less resistance is brighter. And here I'm using a 9 volt battery instead of the usual AA batteries. And as you can see, it makes a big difference. Though I found that without the potentiometer turned to a high resistance, the battery doesn't last long. And now for the oscilloscope to see the voltage waveforms. Here I'm putting the probe in the scope's channel 2. First I connect it directly across the batteries, so you can see the battery's voltage. It's a nice steady flat 3.09 volts DC. I turn on the Jewel Thief and freeze the display. You can see when it's on that the voltage at this point in the circuit is anything but flat DC. In fact, you can see the voltage is usually close to zero with periodic spikes around 504 millivolts and at a frequency of around 17.24 kilohertz. Zooming in, you can see that the spikes are actually a dampened alternating wave with sharp rises and falls. The household's 60 hertz AC is also having a bit of an effect here. Next, I connect the probe to channel one. I connect it up to measure voltage at the normal Joule Thief output across the transistor's collector and the battery's negative. Notice that there are spikes here too, and switching the cursors to channel 1, that the peak voltage is around 38.8 volts. The frequency is around 17.24 kHz, in sync with the spikes across the battery. And now I move channel 1 to the output of the coil going to the compact fluorescent light bulb, while still leaving channel 2 across the batteries. When I unfreeze the display, you can see that the peaks of the output are also in time with what we saw at the battery. And lastly, I disconnect channel 2 from the battery, so we're left with just the output at the light bulb. Bringing it up so we can see the bottoms at least, I zoom in and you can see that this is really an alternating voltage in the form of a dampened wave. Its lowest voltage peak is around 228 volts, but scrolling up as far as I can, I can't even get to the top of the highest peak. Since I've scrolled down from here 500 volts, and there's still 200 volts here, that means it's over 700 volts. But if I increase the resistance, I bring the peak down, as well as increase the frequency. Now it's around 700 volts. Next I scroll back down and get the frequency. It's around 23.81 kilohertz, with a 700 volt high peak. And now for the solar cell test. It's unlikely that anyone can tell with the naked eye if the light bulb is flickering as a result of the periodic voltage spikes that keep it going. So instead I got out a solar cell. The solar cell is powered by the light from the light bulb. To get enough light, I'm powering the Jewel Thief using a 9 volt battery, though it's around 8.4 volts at this time. I close the box to eliminate outside light and turn it on. Channel 2 on the oscilloscope is the voltage output of the solar cell, and channel 1 is the output of the Jewel Thief that feeds the light bulb. As you can see, there is a correlation since their frequencies match. Remember, this is really measuring the optical output of the light bulb, and given how well it matches the electrical output of the Joule Thief, the solar cell's response time is fairly good. Most of the time, the solar cell is seeing a fairly steady amount of light. These gentle slopes represent a gentle dimming of the light. This frequency is around 31.25 kHz, or 31,000 times a second, which is too fast for the human eye or brain to register, so the gentle dimming goes unnoticed. This spike-like activity here is around one microsecond long, which is also too fast to register. It is interesting that the voltage actually reverses here. After turning it off, I open the box, and this is what the solar cell output looks like in its dark corner. Pretty flat. That's normal. I was asked if a PNP type transistor could be used instead of this NPN type transistor. From searching the web, I knew it could, with some modifications. So here's an NTE219 PNP transistor. 
I put it in the circuit with the emitter, collector, and base going to the same places as the NPN transistor was. But to make it work, you just have to reverse the batteries, switching the positives and negatives. And here it is in action. Many people want to know how long the AA batteries lasted when powering the Jewel Thief. So with some brand new batteries in place, I put a sheet of paper with writing on it in the box next to the light bulb and connected a voltmeter across the batteries. Before turning on the Jewel Thief, I noticed that the battery's voltage was 3.11 volts. I then turned on the Jewel Thief and adjusted the potentiometer's resistance while looking in the hole until the light was just bright enough to read the writing on the paper. Checking the resistance later, it was 34.3 ohms. I then inserted the camera and adjusted the manual settings to match what my eye saw. I kept track of the time that the Jewel Thief was on, along with when I took video of the light. But the results weren't great. The light remained bright like this for only 25 minutes running time. Then for the last 30 minutes it was dimmer, until finally after a total running time of 55 minutes, it dimmed and then went out. Also, every 10 or 15 minutes the transistors and batteries would be getting hot, so I turned everything off and waited 10 minutes before turning everything back on again. But I wanted better. So I replaced my 13 watt compact fluorescent light bulb with a 5 watt one instead. I also mounted the transistor on a heat sink. I put in a new battery and tried again. This time I could get the same brightness with the potentiometer set to a resistance of 69 ohms, which meant the current and heating would be less to do the same. Sure enough, the transistor felt cool throughout and the battery seemed okay. It remained bright for an hour and a half and was out completely when I checked 15 minutes later, for a total run time of 1 hour and 45 minutes. It did seem to die out more quickly at the end, so maybe there was some battery heating after all. But given it was bright for three times as long, it was a big improvement. I didn't think measuring current would give accurate results, since all the points in the circuit are far from DC or sinusoidal AC, but a lot of people seem to do it anyway. So I tried it. Unfortunately, the light wouldn't come on when I tried it with either my digital or analog meters. I was asked if it would create interference with things, so here are things I had on hand for testing. First, I swept the entire AM radio band, and here's an example of the interference. The evidence, he's now the I couldn't pick up any stations on the shortwave band from 3.2 MHz to 22 MHz, but there was noise added. I didn't notice any interference across the FM band, and that was even with sweeping the Joule Thief frequencies using the resistor. And here's an analog TV receiving digital stations using an antenna, which are then converted to analog. But there's no interference. Stop, just, no, stop, and lastly, here's an LCD screen, also with no interference. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes the one where I show step by step how to make this Jewel Thief circuit, another on how to attach a transistor to a heat sink. And for variety, how to get a piezoelectric crystal from a lighter for easily creating sparks. And a big thanks to Todd Harrison for reviewing a large chunk of this video. Be sure to check out his great electronics and DIY videos on his channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!